Hi, this is John Craig with Performance Plus Tennis. If you're struggling to get power and control on your two-handed backhand, you're gonna love this video. I'm gonna give you five great tips that are gonna help you improve the performance of your two-handed backhand. And in today's lesson, I've got my student Randy here with us, who's gonna help demonstrate these five steps. So the first key to having a great two-handed backhand is having the appropriate grip adjustments. So what I'm gonna have Randy make sure that he does is that when he's in his ready position, his non-dominant hand is in control of the racket. So that when he enters into his backhand, it's very comfortable and easy for him to rotate his right hand to a continental grip. And now his two hands are matching. So you're in your ready position. I want your non-dominant hand to be in control of the racket. You've got a forehand grip with your right hand, and the ball comes. Your first move is going to be made with your non-dominant hand. The non-dominant hand is already in the position. It's going to play the backhand in, so there's really no adjustment to be made. A lot of players make mistakes because they're trying to find their grips, and they have too many movements with both hands. So if your left hand is in a position that's going to play the backhand in, it's already set and ready to go, and now all it's got to do is hold the racket and allow the right hand to slide to a continental. Okay, let's see you do that turn and slide. So as, as Randy enters into his unit turn, his grips are already set. So his backswing starts to feel like it's a part of the forward swing in the way his hands feel on the racket. And that's a critical piece. So the next key piece is really creating a unit turn that coordinates and organizes the two-handed backhand right from the beginning. And this is a where a lot of players go wrong. They actually enter into the two-handed backhand and they prepare with their arms. And as soon as you make the first move with your arms, now you have a disconnect between the arms and the body. And it's very difficult to reconnect that movement back into your swing. So how do we solve this problem? Well, what I want you to feel is that once you've made that grip change, that the entire preparation of the racket is created through the rotation of the core and the shoulders. So it's all a unit turn going back. And if we look closely at Novak Djokovic's two-handed backhand, for example, he's really fantastic at this. He probably has the best unit turn preparation on the two-handed backhand on the tour today. It's part of the reason why his backhand is so consistent and so clean coming back through the ball is he really feels it right from the beginning as he prepares and gets his unit turn. So, you wanna really practice this. Now there's a couple things you can do to practice this too. We, I can put the racket down and I can just clasp my hands together and I can just let my hands go back with my shoulders. And I can feel like my torso is really what's taking the hands back, see that? So there's, my hands are right in front of my belly button here and they're still in front of my belly button and then perhaps they stretch at this point a little bit. But most of this movement is gonna be from the core, the core rotating. Let's see you do that a little bit, all right? Um, yeah, yeah, good, good. And this is just a critical, critical piece because the two-handed backhand power and control is really predicated on that body rotating back in and getting a great unit turn right from the start. Tip number three is really knowing where the ideal contact point is. And I see so many players at the club level who are just guessing at the contact point on the two-handed backhand, and oftentimes they're too far from the ball. So if you're a little too far from the ball, it just weakens your ability to rotate and generate power. So it's critical that we know exactly where the contact point is and then use our footwork to get to that contact range. So the ideal contact for a medium height two-handed backhand is gonna be really in front of you, but next to you. See how it's not away from me? It's actually much closer than a forehand would be. And I'll give you a perfect example. Let's imagine I'm hitting a left-handed forehand and I move my hand to the bottom of the handle. Wouldn't you say this is too close? How could I hit a forehand in here? It would never work. But if I go to a two-handed backhand, look how it's right here. It's right next to me. See that? See how the hands are right there? And then from a side view, it's going to be in front of my right hip. That's critical. Okay. Now, you can practice this just with shadow swings. So let's see you do a few shadow swings. Go ahead move out and just practice being next to you. Good. And swing through it this time. Swing through. Good. And you should feel like it's comfortable and natural to rotate your hips and shoulders into that contact rather than feeling like there's a reach or an inside adjustment. Okay. Do a few more. Good. 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 How does that feel? 
Good. So knowing where the contact point is critical. Otherwise, when you go to play a ball, you're just, you're just trying to guess how to get in position to play the ball to generate the power control that you're seeking. So this is a key piece. Tip number four is generating great extension through and beyond the contact on the shot. And what we often see at the club level are players that come in to the, play the ball and when they come in to play the ball, they break at the elbows and shorten the swing and they play the shot primarily through the arms and they shorten the whole swing. And what that does is it actually, it separates the arms from the, from the body core rotation and just weakens the whole movement. So, you know, we do see pros on the tour that appear to do that. There's a few players that really kind of come in and they're just skillful at, you know, breaking at the elbows. But by and large, most of the best two-handed backhands are deliberately and purposely getting a great strong extension through the shot. And the extension is emphasized through the left hand. So when you're coming onto the ball, you're thinking, I'm gonna drive that left hand out and away and get a nice comfortable extension to drive the ball away before I complete the swing. So that's something we really wanna to, want to build in there. And again, one of the little drills you can do is a couple different things we can do to build the left hand. But one of them is just taking and putting your hands clasped together and coming in like this and just pushing the left hand out. So you're actually pushing your right hand away and getting to there and getting to there. Do that, do a few of those. We turn and your left hand's really pushing and driving. And then when we put the racket back in the hand, we're gonna feel the same thing. We're gonna feel like the left hand is the dominant hand. The right hand is really sitting on top and complementing the left hand. And it's just going along for the ride that the left hand is really creating through that driving action. Okay, drive it. Yeah, drive it out and drive it away. And yet you can look at some of the best two-handed backhands in modern game, in recent history. I'll go to David Nalbandian, Murat Safin, obviously Novak Djokovic, and, and Rafael Nadal, just to name a few. And and they're all of their two-handed backhands are characterized by outstanding definition and through that extension on most of the backhands they play. So another way to work on this is to just literally just work on hitting four hands with your left hand and stalling at the extended point. And that's a great drill. You can just drop and hit balls and extend out. Okay. So let's try a few of those. What do you say? Yeah. In this case, Randy is just going to play a left-handed side. He's going to extend out through the ball. Good. Just feel that nice, easy extension out. Beautiful. Looking good. Beautiful. Good. Now put your right hand on, but you let, let, let it just float on the handle. Let your left hand dictate. Okay. There you go. Ball. Okay. Good ball. The other benefit of doing this extension drill is that it really teaches you where the acceleration needs to happen in the swing to generate both power and control. Because by the time we get out to the extension, the ball is already gone. You can't help it anymore. So if you're accelerating more here after the ball is gone, you're certainly not going to help it. So the skill of being able to accelerate out through the ball and extending is what's going to give you the feel and understanding of where the acceleration happens to generate that movement and that's gonna help you generate the power and control. So you're rotating and extending. So the backhand coming back through the ball is a rotation and a drive or an extension. And it is really learned through that drill. The last tip is to really check and make sure you've maintained excellent balance throughout the backhand. So when you're practicing, what I want you to do is pause at the end of your shot and do a balance and stroke completion checkpoint. And that means that you're going to complete the stroke now, all the way so the end cap is facing the net, and you're going to hold your balance with your back toe up in the air. Now, to be clear, this is not what you're going to do when you're playing, but when you're practicing your drills and your skills, this is an excellent way to check to make sure you've maintained good balance and have good rotation into the shot. So let's have you do a few of those, okay? Here we go. Good. Excellent, feel a nice unit of movement back into the ball. Yes, good, two more. Yes, beautiful unit of movement. Good job. So of course, that's not how Randy is gonna finish his back end when he's playing. 
So what he's going to do now, he's going to add the additional step. And that means that the rotational force and energy is going to draw that left foot to the side. And this is the last balance checkpoint before he pushes off and recovers. So he moves, plays, balance throughout, land, push off. Okay? And this is the rhythm and the balance that you're going to use as you enter into and exit from the backhand. All in one flowing movement now. There you go, push off. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Those look clean. So, wow, those five tips really helped clean up your backhand. He's now moving much more as a unit of movement. He definitely came here and he had a little bit more of a, his right hand was kind of lazy. It wasn't getting into the Continental. And the other advantage to getting that right hand to the Continental is the ability to disguise maybe a slice coming so you can do different things. So, but if your right hand is not in the Continental, then you're limited in what your options are. So you did a good job of changing your grip. He's done an excellent job of getting a, a much more defined unit turn. He knows where he's trying to go to catch the ball. And Randy does tend to catch more balls out on the tip because he tends to be too far away. But I think knowing where your contact point now is going to help quite a bit with that, right? And then as you're coming onto the ball, you know you're not just going to break at the elbows and shorten the movement, but you're going to really drive the ball away with a nice, natural, but strong extension in the left arm. And then let that float over this right shoulder and hold. And then finally, you've got your balance checkpoints. And that balance checkpoint helped your rotation and your unit of movement a lot, didn't it? You started to feel like you were connecting the swing and the rotation of the body as a unit. And that's the key to getting great power on the two-handed backhand. And then ultimately, Randy just let that left foot naturally want to fall to the outside. And now he's got balance and, and rhythm to recover for the next shot. Great job. Thank you for the tips. You're welcome. I hope you really enjoyed and benefited from today's lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And remember to turn on your notifications because we're releasing new content weekly. Also, if you click in the link below, you'll gain access to our free library lessons that'll help you not only with your two-handed backhand, but it will reveal all the common principles that you want to master to achieve your full potential in tennis. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.